So my name is Ivan. I am part of the core Arch ARM team in Social Apps. And uh, while it's supposed that we are taking care for uh, core ARM support in our sleep distros, most of the time uh, we are dealing with um, making uh, our slim products uh, running on various uh, ARM machines. And uh, when I'm speaking about uh, industrial age, it's a, it's a really, how to say, wide, uh, there are so many devices and the wide range of uh, things that uh, different people are saying that it's the age, whether it's industrial. So <clears throat> for our uh, sales managers or marketing, perhaps, uh, let me see, this is the, the age that they will like to have. Uh, which uh, it's just an informative uh, picture. It's not in. Uh, it's ARM-based uh, machine with uh, a lot of power in it. There is uh, storage devices, USB interfaces, many in network. Uh, it's a full-fledged uh, PC where, while we do it doesn't have uh, eyes or CD disk where you can put a standard uh, thing and boot. It uh, can boot from USB, it has standard, um, everything is more or less uh, okay. -ish. So in these systems, uh, we don't have to do almost anything. They usually use uh, UFI um, firmware to boot. So everything is more or less uh, easy. And it's easy to, to sell our products on top of uh, this kind of hardware. Uh, then we have uh, things like this. Um, there, uh, this particular thing is network uh, card for offloading the um, networking um, functionality from the main server. So it could be some x66 server or ARM server or perhaps uh, even some other architectures, and uh, through. PCI Express, uh, these things get the packets. Uh, there is a lot of processing on the on the CPU itself, and they are sent uh, through the um, through the network interfaces on the card. The thing is that this little uh, well, this um, uh, device, this machine has uh, just a single EMMC uh, storage device, and. Uh, if somebody can imagine how we can put um, uh, SLI on it, I'll be uh, happy to see how this could happen. I mean, there is no USB that you can interact, so plug and boot uh, and install to some to EMC. It has just a release only um, EMC, one EMC device that you can access through PCI Express on the host, which complicates a little bit the things, how you can install the thing. And then, let's say, most uh, common case is that uh, this kind of devices which uh, uh, measure or, uh, let's say, measure or control different uh, industrial uh, environments, uh, um, signals, let's say, like measuring temperature, uh, current, uh, and there's, there are many, many different uh, things that they can do. Some are just uh, networking uh, gateways, some of them, I don't know. The point here is that uh, usually they have some internal storage, uh, flash or EMC or something like that, and uh, usually they have a single USB port. Sometimes they have more, but usually they have uh, just, uh, and sometimes they have network. Uh, well, they have network. Uh, ports usually, <clears throat> but there's there are difference and still um, yeah there are many many of the, these things and then uh, the main problem that uh, we see when we try to <clears throat> help our uh, few, um, potential uh, uh, customers of our operating system is how to well um, how to make device uh, boot uh, standard or general purpose OS as uh, what is ours. It's, uh, we don't produce um, 
a specific flavor for a particular device because there is uh, it's not scalable. Usually we just uh, provide single or uh, there is only one exception for a Raspberry Pi that we do spe specific um, flavor of our operating system just to be able to boot the small devices. But the problem is uh, usually because uh, <clears throat> ARM as a core of the of the the, <clears throat> the 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 system is relatively uh, it's um, uh, how to, how to say we support arm and arm have good upstream support for a core uh, architecture features but then when it comes to the um, peripherals and how the chip itself is booting from where it reads the um, um, uh, booting artifacts or how to say it, they are very different things, ways. Uh, one is uh, booting from MMC, from micro SD cards, from Flash, from EPROM. And uh, the, ROM, the ROM code, which is um, part of the system on chip, uh, have uh, different um, uh, different uh, functionality. Sometimes they can understand the file system on the first, on the bootable device. Sometimes they just read some uh, physical blocks uh, on the device and uh, run it uh, from there. Then, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, then the, let's say if ROM is the really first stage uh, bootloader, then we have uh, different second stage bootloaders. Uh, which are usually U-boot, which is really common across the smallish uh, in the embedded um, devices, and EDK2, which is um, start. Uh, well, we see it. I see it from on some devices, but it's a less common uh, bootloader. <clears throat> Then, um, if uh, because these devices usually does not use. Um, SCPI tables because uh, yeah uh, they are mostly device tree based, which uh, device tree describes what is the on the main board, uh, what kind of uh, peripherals they are, and uh, the thing is that uh, <clears throat> the our operating system uh, operating system images does not provide uh, none of these uh, things like uh, bootloaders or device tree files. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we rely mostly on the ACPI uh, tables, which describe the hardware, and drivers are loaded because of that. And uh, we, well, uh, there we cannot pro well, we the bootloaders, uh, this uh, Ubuntu and uh, EDK2, are usually uh, compiled for specific platforms. So we cannot um, put. Um, uh, all bootloaders for all known and unknown uh, devices out there. So it's supposed that um, these uh, uh, first stage well, bootloaders like uh, Ubuntu and EDK2 and Device3 are provided um, by the uh, provided to our operating system through uh, UFI uh, environment or through group uh, config uh, option to the operating system. Uh, to the kernel, which will then take care for uh, instantiating the proper devices and activating drivers for them. But um, yeah, that's uh, usually so. It's uh, complicated because uh, usually you have uh, just a single uh, media from which you are booting, and usually our uh, operating system. If we take um, even for when you install the operating system, you choose uh, um, uh, format the the media on which you are installing, and even if we have uh, the the vendor put some artifacts on the main media, they will be destroyed because of install process. Or we have these raw images, which is supposed to contain everything, and you just disk dump them to the to the media. So. Again, if there's something put from the vendor in some some way, <coughs> it will be uh, uh, destroyed by the install process. <coughs> and there are some um, attempts to um, uh, 
to standardize the, the whole process. Uh, so Ubuntu um, is uh, this um, <coughs> UFI specification is um, um, really the, it will, if all devices that we see have this uh, cover the UF, part of the UFI specification, uh, which is covering the boot process, have implement, has this implementation, the life will be much easier for us because uh, the boot process will be um, standard. The, both uh, Ubuntu and ADK2 have support for a long time for this uh, um, uh, specification. But uh, usually vendors does not, uh, they, they don't uh, care, they don't uh, um, don't know some some of them that there is a attempt to spe to standardize the boot process because uh, <clears throat> in the case of Ubuntu, which is really I will say my major my, most of the system are using Ubuntu, the uh, the Ubuntu itself have. Um, different concept of booting artifacts. Uh, there is a specific format um, uh, of the file which uh, uh, you can pack the uh, kernel, uh, root file system, and uh, some uh, in device tree in the, in the, in the uh, one file which uh, describes uh, to the U-boot, okay, this is a root file system, this will be the kernel that you have to run. So the U-boot know how to to run the whole thing without uh, using grub or something else. And usually the vendors are um, opting for this option, which is not compatible with uh, standard uh, running the um, uh, general purpose OS. So usually we have to tell them, okay, you have to enable this uh, option in the your Ubuntu configuration and change your uh, scripts uh, because Ubuntu is uh, using some kind of text file with uh, steps uh, which are describing how to find um, the bootable artifacts and execute them and some common sense yeah so there are a lot of um, things that we have to explain to the vendors that ha they have to change or sometimes we have to change make the changes and show them that this is so simple that they have to do a little bit more work on their side so make all things a little bit easier for us and then these devices, uh, <coughs> um, well, uh, as I said, the <coughs> uh, upstream core ARM support is relatively okay. It's, uh, uh, there is nothing really that uh, prevent, that I can say that uh, is missing upstream for this architecture that we cannot run just some, anything on the, this uh, uh, architecture. But then the, it's not just a CPU, there is a lot of controllers around these uh, CPUs in the so-called system on chip. And that's where the vendors, uh, <coughs> it's supposed to, because every system on chip is a little bit different, a different USB controller, different uh, SATA controller, the different, uh, I don't know, WART controller even. And it's supposed that these vendors are upstreaming the drivers for this uh, device, for its own socks, uh, system on chips. And uh, some of uh, vendors like TI, I will say, and uh, recently uh, Qualcomm are relatively good. They have um, good support for all the portfolio that they provide. Some of uh, them, I will say NXP and perhaps uh, many others, are really not so good. Uh, they, and uh, <coughs> they, uh, they have some, some of them have some support just to bring up the, the initially the first samples of the, uh, the chips that they are having. And you can bring up the device to the serial console, but uh, you don't have uh, USB, you don't have network, for example. You can see that it's booting. They are doing uh, most of the work in the vendor, vendor Linux tree, trees, and um, they don't they don't bother uh, upstreaming the things because uh, <coughs> it's easier you know uh, and um, usually <coughs> when uh, when uh, dear customer uh, customers are buying chips they are using also the vendor tree uh, and uh, in the vendor tree things maybe are uglier here and there but it's they are working uh, overall so 
Uh, people are usually get uh, what the vendor is providing, uh, create the product, and uh, they forget uh, about the uh, whole thing until somebody says that you have to support your device more than two years or something. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, some of uh, usually these vendors are so big uh, that so uh, that uh, when we try to ask, uh, do you plan to upstream uh, <clears throat> uh, this part, this driver, or when you when we can see something on that, they completely ignore us because if we say that we want uh, to put our uh, operating system on, let's say even. 50,000 uh, devices, uh, they, this is just not a number that they will like to hear. Usually they, they work in the millions of uh, devices, so we just don't exist on the radar, and we cannot, you know. Uh, when I was uh, helping Qualcomm upstreaming some of the stuff, and the rumors was that the pilot, um, uh, pilot um, line of chips for Samsung is something like 2 million uh, chips, just to see that Things are working, and then so if you are not Samsung, you, you don't don't exist for them. Yeah, so it's hard to make uh, upstream, how hard, hard to push them to upstream the things. And then, usually, as as, as I say, these devices are using um, uh, Ubuntu, which uh, <clears throat> and usually they are. Um, it's a Linux and it's um, some kind of Linux on top, I mean operating system on top of this, but usually they, uh, the update process uh, is not like, there is no package manager and uh, you just update the whole partition with the new image and uh, that's it. <clears throat> And uh, this makes sense for them because if you have uh, thousands of devices on the uh, on the line, uh, it's easier just to plug one USB when you produce the device, plug the USB, it uh, program itself, it deploy the image, and you move to the next one. So it makes a lot of sense. And while um, we are slowly getting to the our uh, installation media to something like that, but uh, uh, well, I'm. I am working for say just two years, but uh, I see that uh, there is uh, usually the things are you, the, our images are distributed as ISO, uh, you know ISO. Even we can you can put the ISO on the USB and it will boot your machine. It's somehow uh, strange because there was a uh, <clears throat> year ago or something some someone from um, um, let's say yeah Siemens I believe, and there was they are skilled engineers you know. They have some of these something like a device like this, and they we say you you can install the image on this, and they say okay I have ISO where I should put this ISO on this device you know they it's hard for them to to how to say to understand how to install our media. Uh, of course they can do network install, but it's really uncommon and. Uh, even our engineers are, I struggle to create a proper network setup so I can do network install. So it took, took me some time to uh, to make proper uh, environment so I can do network install on this. So it's not uh, common and people, when they face uh, such difficulties at the early stages of the trying and uh, our operating system, they just give up. If somebody give them a raw image that they can just uh, put on the media, they are happy and they don't want to listen to anything else. Um, so I believe uh, with, um, yeah, uh, with raw images are things to, to, to do, to go. And then the Slim Micro came up uh, recently well, M maybe not recently, but which uh, <clears throat> contains uh, the full this uh, full image, and the thing is that it's automatically even resized to the size of the uh, media once uh, it runs for the first time. But uh, at the beginning, uh, there was <clears throat> now the slim micro images contains also so-called first boost setup uh, wizard, so you can type the root, because once if you copy the slim micro image on the boot media, it will boot, but uh, it, there will be no root password, there will be no SS hash. So you cannot interact with the system if you if don't you don't uh, do some kind of initial configuration. 
and that's uh, in the documentation it's written that you have to have separate per, uh, partition that is proper, properly labeled which contains some configuration file and then during the first boot uh, we have some services that read the configuration and set up the machine put uh, start the services like sshash change the root password and configure the network and things like that <clears throat> the problem is uh, <clears throat> uh, was that um, most of these devices okay they can boot well some of them, let's say that they can boot from USB, but they have just a single USB. So there is no way that you can, well, you have to boot from the USB and you have to another, have another USB to do the configuration of the, of the system, which is not possible on the first, how to say, site. So it was, uh, and uh, just recently I was able to, to get around the thing, yeah. No. So only the ignition combustion part is specific to the network. So what yeah. happened was used to be called the juice images, was less with field in the same auto expanding um, Kiwi way. Um, and I believe also there are ISO images available, obviously, micro shoot that they needed. Okay. Yeah. And right now, the, the slim micro images include this uh, uh, juice uh, first boot um, uh, wizard. Uh, which uh, you can configure the things a little bit at least uh, set up the root password <clears throat> but yeah and then uh, I get a little bit more familiar with the build service and uh, these Kiwi templates that are used for uh, creating the sli slim micro images and this thing looks really like a way to go because um, uh, you can specify, well, you have a template which uh, will produce for you the, the regular Slim Micro image as uh, defined by the architects of the Slim Micro. But then you can specify, <clears throat> for example, uh, all these devices have different serial console. Uh, one is the TTYS0, the other is uh, TTY PLS0, the other is uh, EMI0. And it's important for this device to have some interaction because they don't have a graphical display. So serial console is the thing that uh, you will like to have to interact on the low level initially with device. So you can specify in the Kiwi template what will be the kernel command line. Uh, you can specify many things, uh, you know. Um, and uh, sometimes the, yeah, we don't provide this uh, boot firmware that I mentioned earlier, so they can, um, Add these packages in the boot in the on in the list of the we we build the packages with but in the OBS we just don't uh, include them in the default meta and it's not possible to include them all of boot flavors in the the same media so they can choose uh, which bootloader they will like to use uh, as a package some of the um, bootloaders as I say some of the devices uh, machines. They, they cannot read the file system. And NXP is one example where you have a boot, but you have to put it on the, on the 64 sector of the boot media, you know? And this is not a, you, you have to just DD the thing on the 60, for, you know, several sectors after the 64, the, the binary. So the when processor start executing, it will fetch the, the code which is there and start executing it. And the the inter well the the thing is that one processor of the NXP, even in the same EMX8 series, EMX QM, is looking for a bootloader on the uh, sector 64. EMX8 MM processor is looking at the offset 62, which you cannot put all the bootloaders. You know they will start uh, um, corrupting each other. You know uh, so. The only way that I can create, uh, I, I have to create specific slim mic, sl, sl image for this particular processor. Other, uh, there's no other way to boot uh, slim micro on this. I have to put specifically 
the bootloader on the these uh, things. And um, the Slim Micro and Kiwi um, scripts and uh, um, framework allows me to, to do this. Uh, it allows me to put the even uh, device tree files on the place where the uh, the system can uh, find it. Um, <clears throat> I can cha change the um, kernel, default kernel if I like, because, for example, NVIDIA insists that 60K uh, kernel will perform uh, really better than our default 4K page uh, size kernel. Uh, yeah. Um, and then uh, also this helps um, with... Um, uh, packaging uh, out of three uh, or uh, deploying uh, out of three uh, kernel modules um, because uh, this um, this uh, as I say this um, <coughs> the processor does not uh, have a really good upstream support for some of the drivers. Uh, you or it's suppose uh, that um, manufacturer or ODMs or OEMs uh, create uh, out of three modules uh, in, for example, in our OBS uh, service, and they can create package which will install the module on the right place, and just uh, add this uh, package to the the whole uh, 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 Slim Micro uh, image. So. When the things is installed, the running kernel will find the out of three patches in the place where uh, it's supposed to be. They live, so they can create a um, relatively uh, well, a really functional system uh, without um, really changing. Uh, uh, I suppose. Well, I don't know really, but without changing um, our. Set up just adding uh, things on top of uh, of what we are providing and what uh, we are selling to them. Uh, well, yeah, this is, was a really sh brief uh, flight through the topic. So, I, uh, if you, if someone has some question that uh, I can answer, well, even yeah, yeah well. Maybe I will ask, uh, do you know about some a uh, U-boot device with, which is like well-behaved and is commercially available and has some decent, like has a network card and some storage? Right now I cannot uh, say. Okay, I'm thank you. sure they are, but right now I cannot, sorry. Uh, so at some point you were mentioning uh, that the installations could not happen in the production line. So that's fine. Now, uh, how are those images that are being built on uh, OBS ending up in the devices on a yeah. mass scale? Uh, well, um, they have. To, well, still they have to have some uh, specific. Um, vendor way to transfer the image. There is no common uh, way to do this. For example, on the card, which uh, <coughs> this uh, uh, NVIDIA card, they have specific, uh, we have to wrap, well, we have to wrap the image into some proprietary format and uh, streamline this to the, to the card. Well, what we have done is to <coughs> extract uh, init RD in the RAMFS from the Slim Micro and uh, disable most of the <coughs> boot services. And when we reach uh, some of the first uh, pre-mount uh, thing, we DD the real Slim Micro on the EMMC. Uh, it's a, this is executed from the RAM. Well, you, you specify in the proprietary format that this is RAMFS that you want to run with this kernel. and this payload, so when the RAMFS is uh, run it on the on the card, it will DD the real Slim Micro on the MMC, and then will, it will reboot and it will have the Slim Micro running from the MMC. So it's a... Uh, uh, out of curiosity, uh, what is the volume that we are talking about here? Uh, 500 or thousands of devices? Uh, in this case, I believe they are using them in the data centers and uh, 
it depends on the data center, but uh, we are talking about um, a lot, a lot of, a lot okay. of things. Yeah. But yeah, the, once you have packaged this, uh, our images packaged in the proprietary way of installing, then deploying uh, is uh, relatively um, easy. You can do. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there is no, every device is specific, every configuration is specific, so they have to have something uh, on top of what we provide. Yeah. Hi, I have a couple of questions. How do you handle updates? Sorry? How do you handle the updates of the operating system? And the second question is, uh, how vendors are their proprietary uh, applications or binary blocks to the, yeah. to the image? Do they have to upload to OBS? Or? No, no. Uh, once the thing is installed, it's a regular uh, uh, SLE uh, system. So they they can update it uh, in the, the, this case with a transactional update, uh, or if it's a regular SLE system like uh, zipper up and uh, this update, they can add uh, repositories as usual. It's a standard uh, in all other respects, so no change there. And in the case of devices not connected to internet, yeah, you can ask uh, our. Uh, man I don't know, yeah, managers and uh, salespeople, how, I don't know who is responsible, yeah, they still, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. Ongoing discussion, how to improve that for now. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I, I believe that I can, sorry, I, yeah. I, I just can add a little bit of context to someone, uh, someone's question. Because uh, in my previous job, we were basically uh, doing the same thing and producing 94 or 100,000 machines that were being distributed across uh, the whole Philippines. And basically, when it came to updates, you basically don't because you prepare only for one operation that is only going to happen one day. Once you're done, uh, for the next election, yeah. Yeah, you basically that, have an, a full update yeah. of your yeah. whole trusted build, and then that's uh, that's why uh, people are moving to type uh, general purpose OSs like ours because we, uh, the process of updating is uh, something that uh, we do, you know, regularly. You know, it's a regular operating system, so you can update the thing uh, in controlled manner. Even with this transaction update, even something uh, is broken, you can roll back to the previous uh, snapshot. So it's something that uh, they really like, I believe, uh, but uh, yeah. for update process. <coughs> Hello. Uh, going back to the installation topic, um, how, how are things, what are the plans and or how's the progress to improve the installation for um, Raspberry Pi, for example? I mean, yeah. not NVIDIA, yeah. but something that end users can uh, easily yeah. use. Because I, I see, as of today, the, the common, the, the only way to get that is to delete the images to, to the SD card yeah. and get from them. Uh, and you specifically mentioned SUSE OS installation media. And I was wondering if is that a SUSE installation problem or is it a common problem? Yeah, I don't think it's a common problem. But uh, if I go to the first question, uh, we provide the only uh, specific um, uh, images for Raspberry Pis. We provide the raw image for Raspberry Pis, it, which is supposed to, we have two flowers for 32-bit uh, uh, and 64-bit, yeah. But we provide them. Uh, and uh, Open, OpenSUSE is providing the a lot of uh, this kind of images for uh, different kind of boards. But uh, for SLI itself, we provide only for Raspberry Pi. Yeah, I, I actually meant like, uh, is there a plan to make something like the YAST installer to, no. like as in we do in the desktop? I don't think uh, there is a, a, such plans. We, at least, I believe some there is some uh, 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 common uh, uh, agreement uh, that uh, we just have to make this process of uh, creating um, uh, images with Kiwi a little bit more 
user friendly and more uh, popular so people just can create uh, easily images for their devices. Otherwise, we, there is no way that we scale for every possible uh, device out there. Okay, and following up, is, the, is there any open source tool, preferably, to, to do that in, in mass? Yeah. Yeah, Kiwi is totally. open source. I am just using OBS just, just to build the things for me. Otherwise, you can do it on the command line. No. I mean, uh, something more generic that you can... Uh, uh, yes. no, no, not, not all devices have network booting support. Yeah. Yeah, but we're talking about Well... Uh, you yeah. can't pin me later because we in QA... To, I believe, I'm afraid that we yeah, have to close. I was, I was asking more of about a more, a more generic uh, mm. configuration. Yeah, I don't know. It could apply everywhere. Yeah, no, no, I'm afraid. But uh, guys, I believe we have to uh, finish the, because there is another speaker after me. If you have questions, of course, I will try to uh, spare them offline. Yeah, so thank you.